What I really believe is that the reason we're here, the, the reason we're on earth to start with, is to experience joy and to be happy. And in fact, the Torah says Torah v'simcha, which is Torah and joy. So it's a very... Um, it's a it's a common theme and over the years i've found that coming from love really does bring you to a greater joy so one of the stories i like to tell is the one about a man uh in his 40s who's on a train and he has nine children with him on that train the children are running all over the train from one end to the other and they're really annoying the other passengers on that train and the passengers are getting really angry and upset and uh, one of them goes up to the man and she says to him look is there anything you can do to control your children they are absolutely a disgrace and the man looks up at her and he looks around and, and looks at the children and he says to the woman, I am so sorry, we are coming from the cemetery. I just buried my wife and I have no idea what I'm going to do with these nine children now. And of course, the woman changes completely in her attitude. And the point of the story is you can't tell what other people are thinking experiencing in their lives or have experienced in the past that makes them the way they are now. So what I get out of that personally is that if you can't assume to know what somebody else is thinking or doing, if you can treat everybody with the love, respect and compassion that you would somebody in this man's situation, then you come from a place which is going to make not only you feel better and happier, but everybody else. So I know, and the, the people who are the hardest to be nice to, those people that are the rudest to you, they are the people that really need your love and compassion most. And the other really important thing that I've learnt is that you are in control of you, and it's not what happens to you in your life but it's the way that you choose to react to what's happening to you. Uh -huh. So that's the, that's the sort of theme of what I'm going to talk about. I have a very exciting guest and dear friend from the United States, Victoria Rechter, and uh, she's going to join us in just a few minutes. I've known her for a long time. And... Um, for those of you that don't know, I did live in Los Angeles for 26 years. As I left Australia, the last thing I said was I'm not going to get involved in any of that new age crap that goes on in California. And it took me less than six months, but it was an amazing journey. And uh, Victoria was there to share a lot of it with me as well. So and the other reason I wanted to have Victoria on the show first and introduce you to her because because she went through a lot of changes herself. She came from another country. Uh, she grew up um, as an only child. She was involved in um, a family business. She went through uh, her parents' divorce. She's married herself now for many, many years and has an amazing partner who she'll also talk about. But she also changed businesses and careers um, in her 30s, which is something that's really difficult to do and has made a success of that as well. And uh, I introduced you as a close friend and somebody who's taken this for lack of a better term spiritual journey but it's not really a spiritual journey is it well uh, you could call it spiritual as um, my spirit was leading me so to speak but and I was following but it is very much physical and emotional roller coaster um, <laughs> that I have went through in the last few years. Mm. But so happy to say, came out on top. And that's that's really the point. Part of coming out on top is your attitude to things and the choices that you made. So when I say when I said just before the uh, the song that you have a choice as to how you look at things that happen to you, um, you can freak out about something you don't like you can go into why 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 does it happen but none of that really helps you or serves you when I say you have a choice what I mean is what what, what how can
can I look at this that's going to make me feel better, that's going to put it in a better light for me? Because if the truth is that the goal is to experience joy and happiness, well, what is it that's going to make you happy? Most importantly, what thoughts are going to make you happy? So things like, well, what can I do about this, which is helping you come up with a solution, or how can I see this that sort of thing. Um, is that something you had to change from uh, Victoria from when you first started um, coming to some of these workshops and classes with me? Um, is that sort of mind change thing something that was major for you? Well, um, as far back as I can remember, um, my father, he used to wake me up early in the morning when I was a child to tell me stories. And the stories kind of were very boring to me as I wanted to go outside and play or when I was a teenager, I wanted to go with my older friends and create all kinds of mischief. And my father has never punished me or told me, you should not do this. Instead, he would tell me stories. A lot of them were stories from the Torah. Now that I'm older, I can understand of things looking really bad, but the hero coming out on top. What I mean by coming out on top, things have always worked out. And as far as I can remember, our life was not an easy one. My father always succeeded in business, in relationships, and whenever he picked up the phone, he would never say, how are you? He would say, hello, tell me something good. I love and that. that. Yes, yes, and that kind of uh, shifted my mindset without even knowing. Instead of listing the things that could go wrong or did go wrong in a day, Mm -hmm. It would make me search for something that went right. Yes. And as we started the conversation, hey, I had a great day. Or I found a parking space in this really busy area of the city. And the meter was full of change in it <laughs> that I didn't have to pay for. And I'm not sure if you have uh, mm. parking meters in Australia. Oh, yes. <laughs> but in the United States, you do. Yeah. Okay, so it's kind of clear. So those thoughts, they kept pulling another good thing and another good thing and another good thing. So our conversations uh, were always about good stuff. Yes, and the and, important part, um, yes, and the important part of that also is that you had not just, you. it's not that you were told anything or even schooled in anything. On a daily basis, he was showing you by his words and his actions a way of being that was more positive because um, you came from the uh, from Russia from the old USSR and uh, there were many things there that would have had an opposite effect so your father's attitudes and your father's way of being with you was amazingly positive for a future yes I will agree exactly with what you said. I am a bit nervous of being on the air. This is not something I do every day, and I really appreciate you having me on. No, no, um, we just, just... I will probably settle in. <laughs> well, it's really just having a conversation with me. Forget the radio part. And that's one of the reasons that I was really happy that you agreed to come on this first show, because you and I have had some amazing conversations for hours and hours and hours and had that underlying understanding but you'd never told me that this is the way that your father brought you up as well so that also explains a lot of stuff um, and really what I'm not what I'm trying to do with this show also is not to say to people you have to change anything you're doing at all you don't everybody's life works for them right now and these changes are only if you want something different if you can see that there might be other things available they're just ways of thinking about things so that you can facilitate change it's not trying to or having everybody behave in a certain way although if everybody came from love our world would be very very different 
Um, yes, it would be. <laughs> Victoria, um, talk a little bit about the, the biggest change in your life. Uh, you were involved in a business that was trucking and logistics and something very, very different to now you own um, a Pilates studio franchise with your husband and you move to another state. You move from Los Angeles to uh, Las Vegas. So talk a little bit about the um, about that decision to start with. Why on earth when you were living very comfortably and it was and you had a good life, such a drastic change. You know, it wasn't from logistics to taxis, it was from logistics to Pilates. Yeah, it's um, it's very interesting now that I reflect back on the last four and a half years of how my life has transpired. Um, I was working with my father since I was in my early 20s and I was his right hand, a very lucrative career uh, in trucking. We... I can say that we fed the United States, uh, meaning we used to truck produce from the farms in California Mm -hmm. all over the country. And that job was very stressful, to say the least, um, but very fulfilling uh, for the reason of the food part where everyone has benefited from what we have done. Mm. You were getting up Um, at four or five... You were getting up at four or five o'clock every morning. Yes, I was actually up and ready to go at 5 a.m. to go to the office. And sometimes I wouldn't even finish working until three or four a.m. As um, transportation never stops. Yes. It is something that is 24-7. And as long as the drivers were on the road, I was a dispatcher. I was uh, the troubleshooter. Um, I was up. Whenever there was a small problem, I would be up on the phone. Whenever there was a big problem, me and my husband worked together. And we also... Would be both on the phone. Yes. So ju- and also, just to interject there a little bit, in the midst of doing this... You and your husband, when you met him, it was almost an immediate love at first sight and you were together sort of forever since then as well. And he was a very different sort of personality to you. Um, And uh, was she surprising when you meet him? Although I don't know why I say that, but it was to me. He's actually a Tai Chi. <laughs> he, the fact that he's a Tai Chi master and into uh, all of this sort of thing, um, which was also so different to what you were doing. So it, just sort of say a few words about his integration into your life. Well, uh, when I met my husband, his name is Emil. Um, he uh, also came from the former Soviet Union. We met in Los Angeles and um, we met over the Jewish New Year. We have uh, made a date to go to services. Um, I was very, um, um, I don't know the right word for it. I, I was a little bit reserved in telling him that I was spiritual and religious in the Jewish faith. As we came from the former Soviet Union, my family and all the Jewish people in the late 60s and early 70s were very tightly watched by the KGB. So being Jewish was not easy. And that sort of as well rubbed off on me growing up Mm. and when I met Emil um, I kind of danced around him with my questions as what do you do what do you like to do what do you do for fun Um, do you believe there is something bigger than you and I took a leap of faith and invited him to go to services Um, for the new year and we hit it off amazingly and I think we have only been apart in the last 20 years of being married maybe two weeks or three weeks if you put all the days together that's amazing so 
he came from a very different background. He always practiced uh, meditation. He's also an energy healer, meaning um, he's very in tune with with all there is and he feels he he meditates he sees uh, uh, people's concerns about their physical bodies and is able to lead them through whatever needs for them to be able to heal themselves so he's Um, he's spiritually in in very much in touch and aware of others so he's a uh, almost an, an intuitive with other people's feelings. Very true. Thank you for helping me express myself. It really helps for you to know me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, when when we met after about a few months, um, my hyper energy had evened up a little bit and he also got very interested in my lifestyle and in our business and later um, about a year later we got married and he came to work with me and my father so after 20 almost 20 years working together um, I would say 15 years of working together my father transitioned from just from age he was healthy he just decided it was time for him to go and um, he died and my mom followed very shortly afterwards Mm. and that sort of left a choice in front of both of us Uh, the trucking company was a very lucrative career uh, for me for almost 30 years for us both 15 years of those And we decided to continue with the business. However, our heart was not in it. And here is where the choices came in. Things just started to go wrong, quote unquote, (laughs) but it really laid the path to happiness. Um, Our personal life together was always with two phones in both of us had two phones in our pockets and on call 24 seven, which at the point when my dad had transitioned and my mom right behind him, there was no need of so much stress in our lives. But what do we do? This is all we know pretty much. And I so kind of, and I, sorry, excuse me, just interjecting for a minute, but I kind of laughed before because when things go wrong, it's not by accident. And that's part of, you know, it's your choice how you look at it that fits right into that same narrative because things are going wrong for a reason. So, sorry, I didn't, I, well, I did mean to interrupt, but just wanted to yeah. interject that as well. So, please continue. And this is where the clear journey began. Um, I will speak about myself on my own behalf. I was no longer led by my father on, and my nest was no longer feathered, even though it was not really ever feathered, but I felt secure as you do with someone that you trust. And now that he was gone, kind of things started to fall apart. The business was very profitable and successful at the same time, yet we did not feel the fulfillment of having that that sense of accomplishment. And you weren't really the way happy. We looked at it. There was something missing. There was absolutely there was something missing. So um, a very close friend of mine by the name of Lily <laughs> invited me to go to a franchise expo. And this was even when we were not really thinking about getting into a different business. But before that expo has happened, there were a series of events in the trucking company. Um, a, another close friend of the family kind of stepped in, started to make waves 
in the way the company was ran introduced more resistance into everyday life where me and my husband we felt less and less satisfied in that lifestyle so they and were we all literally yes. over two days decided to leave everything behind and at first of course it looked like oh gosh this is doomsday but the next morning the sun came up that they started again we were alive and free what was A that conversation later, Victoria, what was that conversation like that next day between you and your husband? Oh, that next day, it's like, um, all right, we have no job, no career, but we have time. We have a couple of bucks stashed away for a rainy day. And since today the sun is shining, let's pretend the rain will never come. And um, we drove to Anaheim to a franchise expo and just walked around and see what can we do. But in the back of my mind, being a planner, um, I lived my life according to my own plan. It was very scary, but liberating at the same time. So not being tied with something I do not like, even though it was ahead whatever was laying ahead was very mysterious and uncertain there was this sense of excitement and um we talked to one company we talked to another company and then on the way out we met uh another company which just happened to be a pilates business by the name of club pilates that just stopped us in our tracks on the way out. We backed up a few steps, spoke to the representative, and between Emil and myself, there was something that was knocking at our soul. So you just knew. You just knew. felt that knocking. Hello, I am here. Take another look. So we took another look. Uh, being blind in the fitness industry, all we knew is trucking, transportation, making things happen, logistics. Here was a fitness business that we had a chance to go into. However, it was not in our home city of Los Angeles. So if we went into this business, it would be uprooting everything in, we know, leaving my husband's parents behind, all of our friends, our whole lifestyle. We uh, decided to do that. We moved to Las Vegas blindly and opened a Pilates studio. Because of the feeling in your gut that this is, that this because just felt of right? the feeling in my gut. Okay. You see, Lily, what could have happened we could have folded our arms, sat down and say, that's it, life is over. I know nothing besides trucking. I am already, um, I will not say how old, but I'll just say lived half a century. <laughs> and no one is going to hire me. I am ready to lay down and die. And actually, but Victoria, the truth is also that we had a couple of conversations about alternative things to do with the knowledge that you had acquired in the trucking industry, um, in the lines of consulting, in the lines of other things that were not, um, but that you could have continued to make a nice living from. But this we did, we did, and that possibility was on the table. But every time I reached out to one of my contacts, there was my solar plexus just locked up. I couldn't do it. And um, there were quite a few opportunities that came through you to be a consultant. And that just wasn't it. And yeah. at that point, it became really scary. What am I going to do? What if I fail? But failure was not an option. Every time that thought came, someone would call on the phone or I would find a flyer or some kind of advertisement showing the road to success. So I don't know if it makes sense, yeah, but 
it seemed like there were little crumbs on their path that we followed. Well, you were making, if if I might, yeah, if I might say, that's exactly the point. There is no wrong decision, no matter what it is. Firstly, because you don't know what the alternative decision would have been or would have produced. So whatever decision you make is a good one, as long as you're making a decision. Yes, even not making a decision, that is a decision to continue to be in limbo. And there's always tomorrow. So, to come back to this, um, I feel right at home on your radio show now. (laughs) Good. Um, uh, It has been, in the last four years, it's wrong to say that I pray for some obstacle, but I embrace every obstacle that comes up because at the same moment as we encounter an obstacle there are these pathways to follow to solve the obstacle and it's up to me to take the choice right so every obstacle every obstacle is actually an opportunity rather than an obstacle which again is exactly which again is follows the theory of it's not what happens to you but how you choose to react to it so um, if you look at obstacles as opportunities that's going to give you much better results than uh, than if you keep knocking against them as obstacles yeah yeah and if there was no obstacle if there was no difficulty I probably would have still been complaining about not sleeping not having a decent Shabbat dinner without interruptions and without being able to go to the movie uh, without any interruptions tell us what so tell us what life we get mm-hmm. sorry it go ahead it is a blessing it is a blessing. Every time your child tells you, no, mom, I don't want to do this, say, thank you, child. I understand that you have your own choices to make, and I will uphold your choices so you can be prepared for the world on your own terms. Yep. Saying no to someone else is one of the most damaging things you can do. I mean, not even I was I actually intervened with uh, in a conversation that a mother was having with her child that I didn't know either of them. But she was so adamantly saying no to him and he was getting more and more upset. And I just said, well, <laughs> I had to go and intervene. But saying no to anybody, whether they're a child or an adult, you have to keep people. You have children absolutely have to be kept safe. But there are other ways of doing that rather than continually saying no, no, no. It it, it just has another effect on the way on how you see yourself. The issue is that when you say no, you're saying no, you cannot do it. Whereas, in fact, very often things that people don't think they can do, they actually can. And also as a child, it brings up that thing of, oh, my God. Whereas you can put it in, you can do this. Why don't you try this? You can do this and this. This will have this consequence. That will have Mm -hmm. the other consequence. about what life is like now, today, with your business in Las Vegas after four years, is it? Because I know you've had a lot of challenges getting to this fourth year. Yes, um, it is uh, four years, pretty much, uh, when we first came, when we first purchased the franchise, not knowing anything, um, we had borrowed money from our credit cards, from our savings account, from our checking account. That is probably a familiar story by many business starters. Entrepreneurs. And uh, we opened our first studio. Uh, there were literally weeks when we had three people frequent for the whole week. Uh, since then, um, with just looking at the whole picture, we have opened three studios that are very successful. We are working on our fourth location and um we are changing people's lives every day. 
Every day we get testimonials from people saying, I am so happy that you are here for me. I am able to play with my grandchildren. I am able to bend over and tie my shoes just because we are able to bring them the physical activity that they could not get anywhere else. Well, that's pretty cool. How do and you we and are Emil- very welcoming. And how are you and Emil feeling together when you talk about where you are in your future? Because you're working together, so you need to, you spend a lot of time together. How's all of that working out as well? That is working wonderfully. We found a way. Um, he has one side of the business. I had a different side, and now we have a home office. He has his own, and I have my own. We literally get together for lunch, and sometimes uh, we have a morning meeting. Well, we definitely have a morning meeting at least once a week on planning what to do. Um, We make dates with each other not to talk about business and literally just go to dinner outside, movies, shows, whatever it is, and be husband and wife versus business partners. And we are very satisfied with the way it feels. The best part for me is our members, is connecting our members are mostly a female uh, demographic. Is connecting with happy women where in my past life we were working with angry men <laughs> all the time, um, not wanting to go to where they were supposed to or work those hours or deliver that load. And now we work with happy women. Tell me. Giving us yeah so much love. and that's what it is it's people and working with people and and tell us a little bit about some of the very different people you have as clients well we have um one of my favorites is this woman she's 82 years old she is doing pilates for the last seven years or so she can outplank a 20 year old she is amazing her attitude is very very young physically she's very fit and um, she's just a regular person that is retired we have um, dancers that are coming in to prevent injuries but most of our people that uh, frequent our studio they are After 50, ladies that have had a career, children, and now they're coming back to take care of themselves. Because us being as women, we always want to cater to everyone else, especially my generation that was brought up in that way. Mm. Um, You know, you are the last one to think about yourselves, Uh, your husband, your house, your children, your parents come first. So it's very nice to see that um, the generation uh, of 50, 60, and 70 year olds right now is taking care of themselves and is happy. Yeah, it's a very, very different. Yes, it's a very, very different age group. 50 today and 50 even 20, 30 years ago is very different. Yes, yes. It's not my mom's 50. It's like my mom's 35. Yes. That's today's 50. And when I'm proud to be the generation. And with uh, some of these women that are coming in, um, have you seen them change over a period of time, uh, personality and everything else, now that they're doing Pilates with you on a regular basis? What are their per- how is very their personality? Much, very much. Mm. Give us one example. We've only got about another five minutes or so left. So, give us a couple of quick examples about of of women who might have come in one way and are now another. So we have uh, one person in particular. She is an attorney, um, a high profile attorney with stressful work. Yeah. She says that. 
coming in for one hour a day to listen to an instructor lead the class helps her to turn off her mind and when she's finished with the class other than feeling energetic from physical activity when she goes home her whole home life is very fulfilling her children don't get to her with carrying her in three different directions at the same time she is able to have a loving relationship with her husband uh, where before it used to be very short because of her stress level and she literally looks 10 years younger skin is glowing and of course the body gets fit as well we have another uh, girl uh, she's actually our instructor she's a retired Nevada ballerina at the age of 31 because uh, her knee cartilage is all gone so she couldn't dance anymore very successful ballerina now she teaches Pilates uh, at our studio and helping other dancers to prevent injuries and mm. to become more um, more flexible and just feel check in with their bodies and feel better as they dance. Um, so the Pilates story really, after story yeah. after story. Pilates really sounds like uh, something very positive. To, uh, to start doing apart from reshaping the body it's it sounds like it does a lot for the mind as well Victoria we've, we've only got a few minutes left so what's in the future I know that it's not just you're happy you're satisfied this is where you are um, what are you and Emil uh, talking about in terms of uh, continuing to improve the quality of your life well um to not to speak about the past, whether good or bad, because we're doing it in the now. Yes. So whatever problems we had before, if we think about them, talk about them, we are reliving them now. So our goal is to continue to feel good, to speak about what's good first, and then all of the goodness just rains on us just like um it comes from the sky <laughs> that's yes, what i can that, say all of that all and of that sounds great yeah yeah it sounds wonderful uh if you are going to las vegas or going to be there what's the website <laughs> our website is www.clubpilates.com and you just look for Las Vegas area and you will find us. And you'll be able to meet Victoria in person as well. Victoria, thank you so much. This has just been wonderful. Um, I'm amazed at how quickly it's gone because I actually had lots and lots more to talk to you about. Thank you so much for having me on. It has been a huge pleasure. So um, just so then just quickly, uh, the quality of your relationships now as compared to when you were working your other job, the quality of relationships with friends and people you care about. Uh, I can say three things for sure. There's no gossip in my life because it doesn't work. I do not talk with my friends about problems that I've had, only about something that's happening good. And my girlfriends who are still in Los Angeles, are um, I see them in a much brighter light and I love spending even more time with them. Excellent. So thank you very, very much. Love to Emil and look forward to speaking to you again soon.